my appointment as chair and as agreed by full council on the um, 17th of uh, May. Thank you. Would like to be more enthusiastic? <laughs> Delighted. <laughs> Uh, you, you wanna, you, I don't think last minute changes in mind are allowed. Anyway, okay. Apologies for absence. Are there any apologies for absence? Don't think so. Councillor um, okay. Ke Brown. Yeah. Sorry. Councillor Coburn. Councillor Brown has been replaced by Councillor Coburn. Oh right. Okay. Councillor Coburn. Um, I haven't received apologies for expecting you. Okay. Well, we'll note the apologies from Councillor Coburn. Um. No urgent business. Are there any declarations of interest? No. Could we know that we may need to conduct uh, business in private? Um, there are no exempt minutes, so uh, unless there's anything raising from the report, we won't need to do that. Um, so, with no deputations or petitions, can we agree the unrestricted minutes of the meeting on the 2nd of May with the associated tracker with it? Any questions? Sorry, can we agree with it first? Uh, yes. There's an associated track of decisions. Any questions on that? I think everything's been done or in train for good reasons if it's not been done from my, my, my perusal of it. Yep, yeah, okay. Um, so item nine then, cycle hangers, supply, installation and maintenance. So if I could ask um, the officers to uh, introduce themselves and uh, introduce the report. Thank you, Chair. Welcome, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Chair. My name is Tom Connell. I'm the Street Operations Manager within Parking and Market Services, and I'm the lead um, for this procurement project. Over the last eight years, Hackney Council has installed over 650 cycle hangers across the borough, providing secure parking spaces for nearly 4,000 residents. Despite this work, the demand for hangers and, and secure parking spaces far outstrips this demand with 5,000 residents still waiting for spaces. I think it's been secured for the CPRP uh, bid for capital investment for the next three years. And we'll, and we'll see enough hangers um, installed to help 4,000 residents of course secure parking spaces within Hackney. We seek the approval of the supply installation and maintenance of cycle hanger contract to continue to the next stage of the project. We are looking to award a 15 year contract length, and this will consist of an initial term of five years with five se separate extension possibilities for two year periods. This is seen as an important to secure a long-term commitment to both the price of the complete units and ongoing parked up front um, and ensure that we have the appropriate after sales support to be able to maintain it for the long term. Using no open tender procedure during the procurement, put together a secure uh, service specification in order to, ass to assess the potential bidders and um, provide suitable contract key performance indicators. A minimum standard was asserted and the working questionnaire went out to uh, soft market testing to ensure the key mandatory requirements could be met. Uh, we decided to use a whole life costing approach to, on the price, to, to, to assess price and prepared um, steps to compare all bids on a like for like basis. Specification was developed based on Hackney's experience of running cycle hangers for the last four years and was refined through the market testing via a pre-question questionnaire. This ensured that Hackney specification would be deliverable by the market and incorporate the latest design improvements that would maximise customer satisfaction, minimise the risk of theft and reduce long-term maintenance costs. We had a great deal of interest with 32, 33 companies providing uh, uh, viewing the opportunity via pro contract and had uh, four suppliers that decided to submit tenders um, with one of these falling, uh, falling short of pre standards set out in the pre-selection questionnaire. As a result, we took three bids forward um, on the basis of an evaluation of 70% price, incorporating social value elements, and 30% price. The weighting was seen as really important um, to ensure that the key functionalities such as security and ease of maintenance, um, and these are key to the ongoing maintenance costs of looking after these hangers uh, and to, to ensure that these things could be given sufficient weighting. As part of the quality scoring, it was essential to do site visits to undertake um, visits to the built bidders' facilities in order to fully assess their product, mainly around security, usability, and also the ease of, ease of maintenance elements. The result of the evaluation was a very close final total, 
with two suppliers and, and a little distance ahead with the third supplier falling slightly further behind. Supplier B was the top score with 81.24%. Supplier A with 80.25%, followed by supplier C with 72.12%. Especially given the close nature of the result, uh, detailed due diligence was check the marks awarded, ensure that all bid clarification had been properly considered and verified. The evaluation process saw the pricing element and the quality separated to ensure that different elements of the tender uh, were, were dealt with complete transparency. It may be worth noting that the winning supplier made strong social value commitments um, to Hackney. These included uh, to set up a distribution hub within Hackney, to employ two full-time members of staff within the Hackney area, and also to, to investigate uh, taking on an apprentice to be uh, looked to be monitored, mentored by the managing director. They also look to um, include um, and organize and promote community bike maintenance awareness evenings once a quarter during the installation phase of the project. Uh, we are seeking that the Cabinet Procurement and Insourcing Committee to approve the award of the contract for the supply installation and maintenance pipeline to supply a fee. We welcome any questions. Thank you very much, and thank you very much to Fozo. I'm sure if Councillor Coburn uh, had been able to come, that he would have uh, drawn attention to uh, you know, the, uh, the fact that uh, this report enables us to deliver a really important manifesto commitment in this area in helping threaten the borough and encouraging cycling. Uh, and I see he's aiming to have another 200 hangers installed by 26, doubling doubling the number uh, and helping another, around 400. 4,000 households uh, access to this service, which is very, very popular and very successful. So congratulations on that. And thanks for this report. And I know you're also bringing uh, jobs to the, the, the borough as well. Certainly the intention, yes. Great. That's great. Okay. Um, has anyone got any questions or comments on that? I have one for, from Councillor Billy. Oh, Councillor Billy Lubbock will ask it online, I think. But, um, I'll take from members in the room first, so that's all right. Uh, Councillor Woodley. Yeah, obviously, very much welcome and some really clear um, report. My only query was around the purchase costs and whether with the sort of wider market interest, I imagine, that in this product across boroughs, whether you would see that coming down um, in the near or the longer term future. Obviously, you've got the costing set out for the next three years for that kind of period of installation, but we have got a 15 year contract mainly for maintenance, but we may have increasing demand just thinking about how, how have we got flexibility there or are we able to kind of keep that price in check and also just to check on the project costs per hanger. I assume that's where we have to kind of do our own checks and maintenance and monitoring of whether they're actually being used or left empty, but I just want to understand them really. But overall, um, very supportive of the paper. Thank you. Yeah, so I think obviously with cost of living and rates of inflation, um, we have got um, stuff within the contract to link to um, industrial indexes, but we see that the, the price of the units are, are most likely to go up with the cost of steel and other raw materials and other things. Um, there's a, a good economy of scale, obviously, with the length of the contract and the, the length of the commitment that we're looking for. Um, the, the prices are effectively locked in for the duration of the contract currently. There may well be points of negotiation within that, uh, but I don't see the prices coming down in the long term. Uh, um, and, and I appreciate that we're going to have an independent assessment of the quality of the product. Yeah. I think it's really yeah. piece of work. Yeah, absolutely. As far as the project costs and other elements that you talked about, there, there has been a comprehensive um, project life cost matrix. And um, when the initial investment was put forward, that was all costed through. So we have a effectively a model that sees units units bought using using that capital expenditure. But as the number of people um, renting spaces in those units increases, obviously the the, um, the income coming in through the scheme goes up as well. Yeah, but the, all the maintenance costs and everything have been fully costed throughout the, the lifetime of the uh, project. Um, am I reading this is effective in commitments for five years, extendable to fifty? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So that's obviously we we can have those points to review the the elements of the cost, what the market's doing, and at those points make a decision at any point after the initial five year term whether we extend that period or whether we whether we go out again. There's obviously uh, a lot of work and cost involved with procurement exercises and other things as well. So we have to be sure that, uh, that the amount of work involved in that justifies the, uh, the potential benefits. Councillor Kennedy. Uh, yeah, thank you. This is um, uh, 
a, a great report and actually gives us, uh, you know, uh, I think that we're doing the right thing and actually we got in there at the right time to, to purchase these things. I can't, I must have missed it somewhere. How long does one last? <laughs> yeah, so um, the unit effectively, the is, is set out in the specification, we're looking for a minimum of 30 years, uh, sorry, 15 years out of the uh, out of the product. That was what we established through the market testing, whether the winning supplier's product is going to last longer than that. So we're looking to that we're more towards the 20 years plus out of a single product. So there does come a point in time when the units are going to have to be assessed for their, for, for their as far as the longevity. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. But, um, I, yeah sorry, Chair. I, oh, carry on, I, carry on, I, I asked the question, not knowing what the implications of the answer might be, which is mm. a bad place to ask a question from. Mm. Um, uh, so really, I should already have found out what I thought, or at least had an idea about what I thought should be the. It doesn't seem that long. That's what. Sorry, that. Well, I think is one of the one of the things within this is that um, obviously there's the uh, the point of when the when does the original hanger stop being the original hanger? And obviously, if we have so the brew. Yeah, well, I wasn't going to use that term, but I'm glad that you have because that's what I was thinking. Um, but yes, there, there are certain elements. Obviously, that if you have a wear and tear, if a vehicle backs into a hanger, if there's external factors, and there are other things going on. I mean. Basically, the product is made out of galvanized steel, and those those elements of the hanger effectively are, are pretty much good for 80 years plus. Um, the things that are uh, um, shorter duration are things like the, co the coatings to the external, things that can be done for maintenance to extend the life of that product. And and is that sort of it almost embedded in the plan that we would look to store yes. and, and retain rather than replace. We have hangers on the streets of Hackney now that are coming up to 10 years plus old. Um, and we've got various different steps in place to, to maintain them. And some of the questions that were asked through the specification was the methods that are needed to ensure that those things can be maintained for the last year. Okay. Can I ask Councillor Benny Lubbock online to ask his question? Welcome, uh, Councillor Benny Lubbock. Thank, thank you very much, and uh, thanks to the officers for this report and all the hard work that's gone uh, gone into that. Um, my question, I, I guess, it was more towards um, Councillor Coban, but maybe you can help with the with this point. With point twelve, um, the report recognises that the true demand for cycle hangers, may, as there is a restriction of one registration of interest per customer. If uh, a member of public is applying on behalf of others in their household, re -demand, real demand may be significantly higher than uh, currently recorded. And I'm just wondering if um, uh, parking services are undertaking any efforts to improve the accuracy of the figures to ascertain sort of true demand for cycle hangers in Hackney, um, or at least moving forward, so, you know, with the, um, if, uh, if if retro retrospective figures cannot be easily obtained, uh, are we you know going to allow people who are registering their interest to indicate um, sales, or if their interest is also on behalf of cohabitants, or or can this um, restriction kind of be lifted as part of this new um, contract? So that's certainly something that we consider. Currently, as you say, it's it's one registration per individual, but that's not apt per household. So if you have, um, and there's also no age limits on the application process for uh, joining the waiting list. So you can have um, potentially a, a couple with children um, and both of the, the couple and potentially children as well, um, if, if they're able to, depending on their age, adding to the waiting list. The functionality of the back office currently doesn't allow for a single user to apply on behalf of other individuals, but that's certainly something that we can, can consider. I think in real terms, we have had a, um, now that we're potentially looking at the commitment and the, the um, upfront to be able to purchase a high number of hangers, we, there's, there's maybe been a reluctance sometimes to actually promote the scheme further because we've already got more than we could actually deal with. Um, so I think now that we've got um, a, a, a firm, firm footing to be able to deal with, deal with demand better, it's almost worth not opening the floodgates, but actually promoting the scheme more um, and allowing to, to, to perhaps better understand the, tr the true demand levels. Um, and I don't know if that's a scary thing or a, uh, uh, just uh, something else. But, uh, yeah, we, we, we have a demand-led focus as far as the rollout and the, 
primarily the focus is dealing with the demand first, dealing with the people that have been on the waiting list longer. But as, as and when we roll further hangers out, we can look at changing that approach uh, depending on, on, on the outcomes that we, we get. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Any, any other questions? Uh, Councilor Benalabak, uh, did, did that answer your question? Yeah, no, that that was really helpful, and yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to a point where we can we can sort of be promoting it rather than just reactive. And um, yeah, I, I know that a lot of residents will really appreciate that. Excellent. So if we can then move to the recommendations, Ms. the point on um, and to agree to uh, I think let the contracts in. I should have got electronic from uh, Recommendation to approve the award of the contract. Recommendation three. Can we agree that? Agreed. Thank you all very much. So, just returning to the agenda, there's no other business I've been told of. No, please note future meetings. And I think since there's no exempt items uh, to be considered, uh, we can conclude the meeting. So, thank you all very much for your attendance. Thank you. Thank you very much, too, for coming. Thank you. And